Hello, Nathan Wolf here. With the Bug Whisperer, hello. So today, uh, I thought we would try to learn how to set up a server with magic, um, kind of from scratch. We're going to uh, teach you uh, everything you need to get magic up and running. Uh, and I think I'm going to have the Bug Whisperer kind of do it, because she's never set up a server before. Yeah, I, have, I know nothing about this. Yeah, well, after this, you will. Mm -hmm. um, but the first thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to do it. Uh, <laughs> so when we set up a server, we're actually making this a super simple server. It only has magic and one other plugin called LuckPerms, um, which is a permission manager. Um, probably the most important plugin you are going to have on your server is your permission manager. It lets you define who can do what on your servers. Um, Unless you've got a super simple, just plain survival, nothing else set up, you probably need some permissions. You would like to have admins that can do special stuff that players can't do, at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend LuckPerms. You can use whatever you want. But LuckPerms has this really cool editor um, that was actually the inspiration for Magic's editor. Wow. Yeah. So um, you can use this from the console. Um, basically, it gives you this nice editor um, for, for setting stuff up. And if you want to kind of like peek over at my screen while I do this part, um, what we want to do firstly is set up an admin group. Um, just going to call it admins, admin, admin, and we have a new group. Um, and that lets us give some special permissions. Um, for magic, the main permissions you're going to want are magic.commands.star. Um, that will give this group access to all of magic's commands. Um, make sure you don't do magic.star. Uh, there's a lot of permissions in magic that do special things like let you bypass uh, protections, PVP, things like that. You're not going to want that on all the time or it's going to be very confusing. You're going to think that um, protection's not working or that kind of thing. Um, so it's good to good to not do magic.star. Definitely don't do star either. A lot of admins think I want all the perms, but uh, you know, there are some permissions that you're not really meant to have unless you, you really need them because they yeah. change gameplay and stuff. Um, um, but one thing I really like to be able to do is minecraft.command.op. Um, and really, that's all you need uh, to get started with because uh, basically what this lets you do is op yourself. So if you need any um, permissions that you don't have, you just use slash op and, uh, and you're good to go. But it is, it is good not to play um, while opt all the time, honestly. Um, and I think LuckPerms actually lets me paste a group in. Does that work? That did not work. That's mm -hmm. sad. All right. Well, uh, game mode's nice to have, too. Um, teleport, nice to be able to get around. Time, uh, to change the time. And then weather to clear the weather. Um, and that's probably about it for permissions. So now we have an admin group. Um, the Bug Whisperer has already logged onto the server, so I can actually um, set her parent group to admin. Um, also a good idea, you have this default group. Um, it's a good idea to parent stuff to that just for consistency. Um, and that should be that. So I'm going to save this. When you save in LuckPerms, it gives you a little command to run. And then uh, you run that command and it adds our new group. So now uh, you should be able to slash op, hopefully. No. No. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, okay. yourself, I guess. There we go. Um, uh, okay, so now you can op yourself. Um, De-op yourself, please. We don't okay. actually want to be opt. We'd like to make sure that we have permissions set up um, so that you don't need to be opt for any of this. Um, so now um, you have your permissions set up, and you might want to test out wands. That's kind of the first thing people do. Um, you should be able to craft one, but... Um, when you're just testing, it's easier to give you stuff. Okay, so uh, there's a command in magic called mgive. It stands for magic give. So you can do mgive and then the item that you want, um, which in this case would be a wand. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's okay. And then just do, yeah, wand, hit enter. Um, and that will give you the basic wand that you would get from crafting. Um, this is available to players um, by default when you install magic, they can craft it. Um, your wand will just have magic missile on it. Uh, if you want to test progression, you need um, an enchantment table. Mm -hmm. So do slash mgive. And then enchantment table, which should hopefully show up in the list there. We're enchanting mm -hmm. enchantment. Let me get that. Um, you place that down, and then you can right click it with the wand, and you have your uh, menu there. So if you go in the spell shop, 
you'll see all the spells that players would be able to get, but you can't afford any of them, probably. Nope, I have zero SP. That's right, so let's give yourself some. And give SP. So it's all pretty, like, straightforward. Now, for this one, you do a space. Um, you just gave yourself one. <laughs> so do a space and give, like, you know, a lot. And you do, like, 10,000 or something. Um, now, the max is basically 10,000. It's 9,999. So you'll see above your XP bar, you now have 9,999 spell points. So you can go back in the enchantment table, and you can start buying spells. Um, but you'll see pretty quickly just grab one. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, this would take a little while if you're trying to test leveling up, right, um, mm -hmm. to do one at a time. Um, so there's a slightly faster way. Yeah, you can do one more in here. Um, and then do slash cast. This is how we cast spells with the command line, normally only used for testing. Uh, do space and then spell shop. This is, uh, this is the, the thing inside of the progress menu that you get in the enchantment table that lets you buy spells. So just hit enter. Um, and you'll see it pops right up, and it, that's a little bit faster. Um, just buy a spell, whatever, whatever spell. Um, and then if you want even faster, do slash cast, and then space, test, spell shop. <laughs> and then just hit it, aren't you? Um, so this spell shop doesn't close. Now it's a little weird because the icons don't go away as you buy them, but just click on something. So now you bought blind, now you... Click on arrow, you bought arrow, you bought poison. So this lets you really quickly go through all the spells um, and buy them. And uh, it won't do the level ups either. So you have all the spells now. And now when you interact with the enchantment table, you will rank up. Uh, and then finally, if you want to, well not finally, but <laughs> if you want to add specific spells um, to your wand, you can use the slash mage command. So let's do slash mage add, space add, and then uh, do fling. That's like your favorite. Mm -hmm. And then hit enter. So you now have the fling spell. Um, now you might want a uh, slash time day just to get the skeletons away. Oh, I thought I gave you time. That's sad. Oh, set day. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Um, <laughs> So slash mage add can be used to add spells to a player. They don't actually have to be holding their wand um, for that. Um, so you can, uh, yeah, you're going to die. Yeah. So do uh, slash cast heal. And you might want to do the level three version. That's, that works. That'll get you. Um, that'll get you some health back. It's fine. Um, so that's how you can add spells to yourself. If you want to just quickly get all the spells, like you want to rank up all the way or just to the next level, there's a command for that too. Um, so do slash mage promote. This will promote you to the next rank directly. And it does this by giving you all the spells you would need. So it's, it's going to be a little intense. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can basically keep doing that. So just keep doing it until you're maxed out. Now you have gone all the way to wizard. Now let's say you've done some testing um, and you want to go back and start all over um, and reset yourself. There's a command for that. So do slash mage reset. Okay, now open your wand up. <laughs> now it's going to uh, default you back to the resource pack again. All right, so while testing, the resource pack uh, might be annoying. Um, apparently you got killed by a creeper while yours was loading. So let's do um, slash get RP space off to turn that off while we're testing. Now get with a G. That way. <laughs> that will turn the resource pack off so that if you reset yourself again or have to relog for whatever reason, it won't do that to you again. So now if you open up your wand, you should see that um, you have no more spells. The wand kept its icon because that's part of the wand um, item itself. So once the, the icon changes, it doesn't reset when you reset yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do slash wand add, add um, blink. And slash wand add and slash mage add uh, both do the same thing for survival wands. Um, they're a little different here. But yeah, let's, let's, I want to show you something. Put that in your hop bar and then try to cast it. Oh. Uh, do fling? I'm trying to find a spell that has more mana than you should have at a beginner spell. Let's just add kill then. 
Um, that'll be in your inventory somewhere, probably. That was weird. <laughs> so uh, the other thing that the wand item saves is the spell inventory. So the locations of your spell are wherever they were at when you had all the spells. So kill, you can't cast because you have not enough mana. This happens to people a lot. They grab the starting wand, they start putting all the spells on it with commands, and they're you know confused that they can't cast it, right? Mm -hmm. So you might want to um, add more mana to yourself. So to do that, you do slash mage, configure, and then mana underscore max this will be the your your mana limit basically how much mana uh, you can have um, so let's do like just do 500 just to give yourself a crazy amount of mana um, that'll let you cast or 5,000 I guess <laughs> whatever you want to sit in there um, so now you can see you will be able to cast kill eventually um, but as you can see in your mana bar regeneration is incredibly slow relative to your 500 because you still have beginner wand regeneration yeah. right but like 5,000 but you can fix that too. So do slash mage configure. And then space mana underscore regeneration. And do like a uh, space 100 or something. There you go. Now see, it fills up a lot faster. It still feels really slow. Um, so now that you've upped your mana regeneration, you can see it's crawling still. You still have, like, your max is crazy high. Um, but you can cast kill now, so. Um, and then, finally, one more thing when you just want to be testing spells. Uh, if you don't really want to worry about the mana or the cooldowns, uh, there's a better wand you can get. So close your spell inventory. And then do slash mgive uber wand, a U-B-E-R wand. This is the uh, super powered wand that Ooh. comes with a bunch of spells, but kind of more importantly, it has no cost or cooldown. So if you open your spell inventory and just pick uh, like blink, fling, yeah, do fling, is fun. And you can you can just spam cast it um, like crazy. So any any spells that you put on this wand will not have casting costs or cooldowns, and that's good for testing. Um. We talked a little bit about the cast command. Uh, it's good for testing spells or if you just need to cast something really quickly. Um, but one thing you can also do with it is use parameters. So let's let's test this out. Um, aim a little bit away from yourself and do slash cast blob. Just will cast the blob spell. And you can see uh, it makes a lovely a lovely blob. Um, but if we wanted to test like how that spell could be done a little differently, uh, the easiest way to do that is with the cast command and some parameters. Um, rather than going and editing a whole new spell every time and tweaking it and loading configs, you can do, uh, let's see, for instance, do uh, a little further away from yourself, because gonna, we're going to make this big. Um, do slash cast. And blob. And let's do uh, space radius. 10. Um, and then what should we make it out of? Do space brush and then space whatever material you want. Uh, the brush is what uh, spells used to build with. It's normally um, a block of some kind, but there's a few other special ones. But that's more of an engineering kind of thing. And then just uh, hit enter. Let's see what that does. Oh, pretty. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you weren't far enough away. It looks like it undoes like right away, too. So let's do uh, it uh, up. And then hit space, undo, and let's make it last like 10 seconds. Undo 10,000. It's actually 10 seconds because these are in milliseconds. One more zero. And then hit enter. There, we almost got stuff. Okay, there you go. So now it's a giant blob made out of shroom lights that lasts 10 seconds before it undoes. Uh, so that's, that's just a kind of example of stuff you can do with the cast command. Um... Let's see, uh, why don't we talk about NPCs a little bit, okay. non-player characters. These are um, entities that you can put in the world that stay forever. Um, they're automatically recreated if they were to despawn, and they can have um, like interactions. Like They can be shops, they can cast spells on you, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So uh, let's, let's add one in there, do slash M NPC. 
And the reason there's an M on all these commands is that I didn't want to conflict with other plugins like citizens has slash NPC essentials and vanilla both have slash give. So that's why you see a lot of the commands in Minecraft are slash M something just to avoid conflicting. Um, okay, do space add and then space uh, whatever you want to call this guy like food shop maybe let's let's make a food shop. Food's good. There you go. Um, so that gives you a little NPC. He doesn't really do anything by default, and he looks like a villager. He just sits there. If you want to give him a special ability, you use slash NPC cast. So NPC space cast, and let's give him the food shop, since that's what you named him. There actually is a spell called food shop that's a food shop. Now when you right-click on him, you'll get a shop. Um, is there a way to change his skin? There is. Yeah, there's a couple ways. Um... We didn't actually put Libs Disguises on the server, so we we're trying to keep it simple. So you can't make him look like a player. Um, but if you want to change uh, his villager type, you can do that. So slash MNPC configure. And then um, villager profession is what it's called. Oops. Two L's in mm -hmm. villager. And then space, and then whatever you want it to be. Um, you can also do type instead of villager profession if you wanted to like change him to something else completely. You could be a witch or whatever. The NPCs are always passive, no AI mobs. Um, I think actually it's MNPC type just for the type. You know, configure it. Want to say, yeah, and then do whatever you want. Big purple dragon, ah, creeper, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. So now you have a creeper that will sell you food. Um, the other thing you might want to change. So look at look at the apple price, for instance. I'll go in there. Take a look. So three apples cost one emerald. Um, we also didn't put vault or any kind of economy plugin on here. So the shops are all going to require emeralds by default. Um, but if you put vault on here, then it will automatically use um, dollars, vault currency. Uh, but let's say we want to make apples really expensive. Just why not? Uh, so do slash mgive apple. So you can give yourself an item, and then you can save it uh, to change what it's worth in shops. So do um, slash m item space save, and then call it apple. You have to call it whatever the name is that you would use to spawn it for this to work. And then space uh, price. Let's make them like 500 or something. No, no, I'm sorry, not they're like not literally the word price, but just whatever you want the price to be. Uh -huh. So put like 500, um, and then check the shop and. Apple should be like way more expensive now. Yeah. Um, so there's a conversion rate between like emeralds and ball currency. Grab your Uber one and you should be invincible. Um, so that's how you can set up shops and manage prices uh, without having to touch configs. Um, and there's a bunch of other built in NPCs that can do different things. If you'd rather have your spell shop on an NPC, you can do that um, versus using the enchant table. So there's a lot of, a lot of different ways you can use these NPCs. Um, and some of the examples require them. So let's let's switch this up. Um, do slash clear just to get rid of your inventory. And then let's uh, let's say you wanted a Harry Potter themed server instead. Mm -hmm. um, so do uh, slash m config to reconfigure magic. Then we're gonna do space example set Potter. So this is the built-in Harry Potter config. And what we're doing is we're actually replacing survival with Harry Potter. Um, so the Harry Potter example is a little different. You don't craft in it um, because in Harry Potter there's only some very specific people that can make wands, right? Mm -hmm. like, like, like Ollivander. Like Ollivander, that's right. So um, to set this up, you're going to need a special item called the Ticket from Ollivander. Um, sort of like the letter you would get to go to Hogwarts, but specific to Ollivander. So you mm -hmm. do slash mgive ticket. Now you have a ticket from Ollivander, uh, but where's Ollivander? I don't know. Let's make our creeper into Ollivander. So uh, do slash mnpc cast Ollivander. Um, actually, not a great idea to show it that way. You, that that would work, um, but let's actually create a new one anyway. So do slash mnpc add Ollivander because there is actually a built-in NPC that's um, kind of ready to go. He's got some dialogue and stuff. So uh, do add. Um, so now we have this guy who's a little funny looking, but uh, basically he um, talks to you so you can add some dialogue to NPCs um, and you can trade your ticket in for a wand box. Go, go ahead and do it. So that will take your ticket and it gives you a wand box. It's a little box and hopefully has a wand in it. Um, when you right click it, it opens up and, and you have a wand. So that's kind of an example of how this uh, all ties together for some of the built-in examples.
Uh, so examples can be combined together. Uh, so you could have Harry Potter and Survival together. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But um, a more common combo is you want Survival and Engineering. So the Engineering example is like my personal favorite. It's sort of the, um, the super ranks beyond the Survival ranks, right? Um, so let's turn that on. Do slash mconfig. And then space example. And then space set. And then we're going to do survival space engineering. And that'll add both of these and replace Potter. So Potter's going to go away. And you'll kind of see what happens. Um, when you do that, now your wand is no longer going to work. It's now just a stick named wand. You should probably even drop it. Yeah, it's basically um, become useless because the Potter example is gone. Uh, but now you can slash mgive wolf. Um, this staff is part of the engineering example. It's my personal staff that's got all my favorite spells on it, and um, it's cost free. It's a lot like the Uber one, but it's more geared towards engineering. Um, so now you can do like you know super blob and all that other other fun stuff. Um, yeah, no, it's hard to hard to thought the resource mm -hmm. pack, <laughs> uh, but it's actually the slime ball if you want to. I don't know if you want to erase this whole mountain for some reason, but you can do that. Oh wow! Oh, gosh. Yeah, there you go. Super blob. Um, there's also some examples that add whole new worlds. Maybe we try one of those out. Okay. Um, do you slash mconfig. Space, uh, space example, add nether side. This is a relatively recent one I made that I'm kind of kind of happy with how it turned out. Um, so one of the things, so you get um, some instructions here when you load examples, uh, the nether side or the nether side, <laughs> as I like to call it, because it's sort of a, a branch of the other side. Um, um, so this example adds uh, a whole nether world that you can go to. Um, and it actually switches up the way the phase spell works. So phase is a survival spell that normally would take you to the nether. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of acts like a, a portal without the portal. But in this case, it switches it to go to the nether side. So uh, why don't we cast that? Just do slash cast phase. It's the easiest way. And uh, one of the other things the wolf staff does, it takes the warm up away from spells like phase and recall. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's uh, actually the Mega Phantom casting spell. Yeah, so the, the another side is actually incredibly dangerous. As you can see, there's crazy mobs everywhere. Um, uh, so it's the same terrain as you would see in the um, overworld. So if you see if you cast Phase. It's basically like uh, an identical copy of the world, except it's made kind of nethery. And I don't know if the Mesa the world generator might not handle Mesa blocks, or I mean, it looks like some of it got the same way, but yeah, I don't think it's we've set it up for a place terracotta, but I don't know, Mesa kind of good here, so I might see what like that. Oh, but you can see like water changes to lava, and all the trees get nethery, and that kind of thing. So that's that's what that example does. Um, there's lots of built-in examples. You can check them all out. Some of them add new worlds. Some of them change gameplay, and some of them are um, sort of total changes to the game itself, like Star Wars or, or bending or that, that kind of thing. Another thing Magic has built in is warps. So you might have a plugin that does this already, but Magic has its own built-in warp system. Uh, it can use warps from Essentials or Command Book also, like in the Recall spell. But if you'd like to use magic system, you can, uh, and it it's it's kind of all ties in with the Dynamap integration and recall and stuff. So why don't you uh, like land on the ground and we'll make a warp here. Uh, so do slash m warp. <laughs> Add, uh, and then I don't know, call it crater since you made a crater here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um. Yeah, just hit enter. So now you have a warp, so if you can walk away a little bit, um, you can use the commands, uh, but you know, it's not, it's not really how it would be meant to be used in game. Um, Magic doesn't really like players to have commands, so we wouldn't have them using this command. We'd probably have them using recall. But just for testing, you can do slash m warp go uh, to go to a warp. There's also m warp send to send another player to a warp. Um, but do, uh, you need the warp name. So do, yeah, crater. 
There you go, and that takes you to Crater. Now, worth noting, you're staring at the ground when you set it. I don't really recommend that. It, it changes your look, you know, changes your view to whatever it was when you created the warp also. So if you want to fix that, uh, do slash m warp, and then you need replace. It's a different command um, to, to change a warp than to, to set one. I didn't want you to accidentally lose warps. Um, so you do you need m warp and then replace, and that will um, update this warp to uh, wherever you're currently standing. And then space crater, you got to tell them what warp you want to replace. Almost always need a warp name here. All right, now uh, let's say you wanted this to show up in the recall menu so players could get to your beautiful crater whenever they want to. Um, the only thing you have to do to make that happen is give it an icon. So we do slash m warp configure. Uh, and then space, and then the warp you want to configure, crater, and then icon, and then uh, space, and give it whatever whatever icon you want. Don't spend too much time thinking about it. But okay. Give it a bone, or I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Hi. Hi, flaming sword. Bye. Hi. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. So now, if you do slash cast recall. Um, there it is. There's our crater, and uh, you can now recall to it, and it will take you there eventually. But got the warm up on. Um, you can also um, add them to Dyn Map, but we don't have that installed, so we're not going to show that. But basically, if you set a marker underscore icon on it, then it will put it on the map, and that way you can have sort of coordinated system of recall being able to take you to anywhere that you've got on the map. Um, that's kind of it for warps. They're they're handy. Uh, another thing that we showed in our Mar Mars video that are kind of cool are called automatons. Um, these are basically a way that you can turn any block into the world into something special that can spawn mobs or cast spells or um, do other things. So let's add a let's add a fountain to your crater and make it pretty. Um, so do slash m auto add fountain. And now you have a pretty fountain that's coming out of nowhere. Coming out of nowhere, <laughs> exactly. It's a little random. Um, to get rid of that, and it's pretty laggy. We need to reduce the particles in that fountain, huh? Yeah, that's fun. I know it is. It is a cool effect. Um, slash m auto remove can get rid of an automaton. Um, uh, you can also do spawners. So do uh, add a spawner. M auto add spawner. Um, and by default, I think it just spawns a variety of magic mobs, but these are configurable to where you can have it spawn kind of whatever you want. But if you add that there, um, then kind of randomly, yeah, you'll get attacked by warlocks and stuff because there's a warlock here somewhere. You can see there he is. Yeah, uh, the bone is super kill. Kill. Um, the spawner is set up to, to kind of spawn mobs uh, regularly every once in a while uh, if there aren't any around. Um, so it's kind of basically like a vanilla mob spawner block, um, but a little more powerful and uh, invisible and unbreakable. So there's, you know, players can't remove that spawner once you've set it. You can make dungeons and stuff with this, um, boss areas. Um, there's actually one of the examples that uh, one of my... Um, amazing users is working on is going to have these automatically added in like desert temples and stuff Ooh. so like there'll be mummies and pharaohs and things that live in the Fine. desert temples which is kind of a really cool idea so I'm, I'm excited about that um speaking of mobs so you've got mob spawners that spawn mobs uh magic has a mob system with a bunch of built-in mobs you can obviously make your own if you want to spawn them there's a command for that of course slash m mob um so do slash m mob two m's it's weird mm. space uh spawn and then, uh, what would be a point in space? Do, do like a uh, red dragon. Oh, no, that's going to look weird. You don't have the resource. Oil, oh, do it anyway. Um, <laughs> like, ah. Yeah, it looks like a gas. Right, the dragon's actually, <laughs> your spawner kicked in. Um, your dragon, the dragons require the disguises. I forgot about that. Just get it. Um, so let's let's spawn a different guy, I guess, but it doesn't really matter. But do slash uh, and mob spawn, uh, then whatever you want that's not a dragon. Because <laughs> the dragons uh, do require lips disguises as well as the resource pack. Um, spawning, you can do, obviously, vanilla mobs are in there as well as magic mobs. Um, and they spawn um, where you're looking, unlike the vanilla command. So you, know, you can spawn them down there. 
Uh, and that's just kind of a way to test mobs more than anything. I wouldn't I wouldn't use that for gameplay or anything. <clears throat> um, so let's see. Uh, there are a few other cool things you can do with the mgiv command uh, that I want to show you real quick. So let's do um, slash mgiv uh, recipe colon uh, recipes with a C. They're not with an S at all. There's no S in recipe. I know that's weird. C I P E and then do colon, uh, and then do emerald sword. Um, so what that gives you is a knowledge book, which is a Java feature that I'm not sure many people know about, but if you right click that, um, it'll teach you the recipe for the emerald sword. I think uh, by default you learned it on login though, so that was not a, a great example, but um, if you want to set things up to where players can learn recipes by collecting books, um, that's a way you can do it. Um, speaking of books, do slash mgive, and then uh, book colon, Fling. Um, you can make books. Now these don't do anything special. This is not a way to learn the spell, but um, it will describe the spell. So you can have books that uh, have all the spells in a category, all the spells in the game, or um, just a particular spell. Why don't you do slash m auto remove so we can not have things haunting and trying to kill you all the time. Um, but those can be nice for um, if you want to give your players some kind of in-game information about all the spells. And actually, if you do slash cast bookshop, I believe um, has all the books built in. So yeah, there you go. These are uh, categorical. Well, the categories are, are not something we use a whole lot anymore, honestly, so it's a little weird um, to have them set up this way. But just grab one of the books so you can kind of see what they look like. Mm -hmm. 55. Yeah, it says all the engineering spells in it. So all the, all the spells in the engineering um, example are in the same category together. So. I'm just a cool way to show spells in game. Um, another thing you can give yourself uh, are player skulls. And there's a few different ways to do that. Say you want the skull of me, you can do slash mgive skull colon Nathan Wolf, and there's my head. It's a little weird, but there it is. Um, so you can use um, uh, any player name there, including offline players, and it will, it will look up their, their skull texture. Uh, there is also a way to do that with the, uh, if, if you give it the actual texture URL, if you know it, like there's some websites for skins that have the, the texture URL, it's, it doesn't actually necessarily have to be a skin somebody's actively using, uh, but you can do skull colon and then the URL, but that's a bit, it's a bit much for us to, um, to show in the demo here. Um, Similarly, you can do uh, portraits. So let's say uh, do m map and then space uh, player and then do you can do Nathan Wolf again if you want or whatever your favorite player is here. <laughs> oh, my favorite player. And that'll give you a picture of Nathan Wolf guy. You are. You have a picture, you have a head, you're, you're kind of weird looking. Um, image maps can also be sort of any arbitrary image and I'm gonna type this one in just because I happen to have a URL handy and don't want to have to like dictate it but um I usually use imager just because it's easy to upload things for free there um so this is something that I added a while ago and I'm hoping I typed that right um and then when you load a uh, image map you can also give it a name which can be useful once you start having a lot of them ah, to keep track of you're pretty I made that one for you. It's mine for you. Um, so image maps are a fun way to, to kind of decorate your server um, without having to make a giant build to make a map out of. Uh, I think that's about all I can think of for now, actually. Yeah. I appreciate you helping me out with this. Mm -hmm. Anytime. I'm hoping you learned a bit. Maybe you'll yeah, run your own server soon. Maybe. I know your friends would love that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, I hope this was also educational to anybody that is watching or listening and made it all the way through this. And um, we'll see you next time.